Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, if you notice a little bit while I'm talking, I am still pretty sick. Most of you know that I couldn't do a video Friday because my voice was just gone. Well, I couldn't wait any longer because there are some huge stories to cover, and I will be back to my normal style video on Wednesday. Either way, starting off, Intel GPUs just got massive performance. AMD's about to launch the GPU of our dreams. RTX 4080 Ti is coming, and next-gen Ryzen desktop APUs. But first, before I get into all of that, I wanted to really quickly cover this Prime Big Deal Days event. For those who don't know, it's an upcoming huge deal event that Amazon is doing starting tomorrow actually it's starting from what i understand at 3 a.m eastern time so by the time you're watching this video it's likely either already happening or it will be in just a few hours and the reason i bring this up is because it seems like amazon is promoting this more than ever more than pretty much any of their main amazon prime day event so it really looks like there could be some massive deals and i'm gonna have an affiliate link to that down in the description below so make sure to check that out it doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. And of course, if you aren't a Prime member already, what's great is that they are now offering a free Prime membership free for 30 days. So if you're interested in some of those deals, you can obviously join absolutely free, and I will have a link to that in the description below as well. Either way, first up today, we have a very interesting story about Intel's latest driver. You can see right here that they released a major driver update for their Arc A series of GPUs that adds some pretty serious performance enhancements. Now more specifically about those updates, you can see the driver update here where it lists multiple games that get some, well, pretty great performance. You can see Resident Evil 4 up to 27% uplift at 1080p with high ray trace settings. You can see Bunch of DX11 games, Final Fantasy 19 online, 7%, the newest Payday 3 game, 37% uplift, War of Thunder, 9% uplift, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, so even older games, 14% uplift, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, 90% uplift, and Deus Ex Human Revolutions up to 119%. And of course, we've seen quite a few updates like this in the past with Intel releasing driver updates that give it just massive performance versus how it was before. And at least to me, it seems like Intel is taking their ARC GPUs very seriously. I mean, if we were to go back to some of the reviews, the performance difference that we saw in that review is likely massive if it was tested today. Basically, I really wouldn't count Intel out of the GPU market just yet. Sure, they're not competing in the high end with the RTX 4090 or RX 7900 XTX, but if you're looking for more of a mid-range GPU, Intel could be a great option and the performance could get way better over time. Let's just hope that Intel continues this trend with their next-gen Battle Mage. And speaking of great mid-range GPUs, AMD may in fact be releasing an RX 7600 XT and it looks like it could be the GPU we've all been waiting for. As you can see down here, this story originally comes from Benchlife where they claim that AMD could be introducing a new variant to fill the gap between the 7600 and 7700 XT. Obviously AMD has their RX 7600 non-XT already and it is a very good GPU for the price, but there's been one major issue and that's that it only comes with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Then you have the RX 7700 XT which is quite a bit more like $450 right around there is what they were selling for the last time I checked and those come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Well, according to this, the 7600 XT would be coming with a whopping 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So a massive jump obviously and according to this, the card could be positioned in the $300 to $350 price range. So for around $100 more, you're not only getting double the VRAM but potentially, hopefully, a more powerful GPU. As you can see down here, it says that it isn't reported which RDNA 3 ASIC the card would utilize, but they're guessing it's gonna be a cut down Navi32 SKU, and the reason for that is because Navi33 is already fully utilized on the 7600 non-XT variant. So I definitely expect if AMD released something like this that they wouldn't just double the VRAM for $100 more, kinda like what NVIDIA has done, but instead, 
would have more cores, maybe higher clocks, but either way, it would be more powerful. At least that's the hope. And while on the topic of upcoming GPUs, a very interesting one was just leaked by Megasize GPU. And of course, Megasize GPU is a very trustworthy leaker, so this really is likely coming. As you can see, they said that there will be a 4080S in parentheses, maybe TI in early 2024. So basically, we're talking either a 4080 Super or 4080 TI. Now, I'd be more inclined to say that it is likely the TI and not the Super variant, just because it really seems like NVIDIA has effectively stopped calling pretty much anything Super, given they didn't do it with the 30 series, they haven't done it with the 40 series. So Super is likely a name that NVIDIA is effectively done with, but at least according to this, it does sound like it might end up being a 4080 Super. Either way, it's set to be a GPU that comes between the 4080 and 4090. You can see that this is based on the 8102 GPU. And if you know anything about the GPUs and what SKUs they end up being, you know that the RTX 4080 is actually on a lesser version GPU, the 8103. It's in fact the 4090 that uses the 8102. So if this uses an 8102, even though of course it is a cut down version, it's almost certainly gonna offer quite a bit more performance when compared to the regular 4080. And of course there is a ton of room for more performance in between the 4080 and 4090. Actually there's like a gulf of performance. It's unbelievable just how much more powerful the 4090 is to the 4080. Either way, this really could be a great stopgap between the two. You can see that the TGP will be below 450 watts, yet in the same price range as the 4080. I personally take this as NVIDIA's big comeback to the RX 7900 XTX, and of course, AMD really does need to look out. This is looking like a really interesting release that I'm definitely looking forward to for next year. And lastly for today, they are finally coming. Next generation desktop Ryzen APUs. For those who don't really follow all of this, and of course, if you would like to follow it, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. But for those who don't, the last generation uh, desktop APUs were the Ryzen 5000 series. And it has definitely been quite a long time since we saw those. To give you an idea of how much of a difference we're talking about here, the 5700G only came with eight CUs and it came with Vega. Yeah, not RDNA 1, not RDNA 2, none of that Vega, just to give you an idea of how long it's really been. Well, the 7000G series was recently spotted, so this is kind of the proof that we have. It's almost guaranteed, I would argue at this point, at least with these leaks, it's looking very good. As you can see right here, we have the updated AM5 system management units, and basically this is the uh, Agisa updates for AM5. And as you can see, with 1.0.8.0, they include Phoenix APUs. So Phoenix is the 7000 series with RDNA 3, all that good stuff, more than eight CUs. I believe it's actually up to 12. So quite a bit more CUs and based on RDNA 3 versus Vega. So should be a massive difference here. But either way, as you can see, they are actually listed for the Agisa update for the AM5 platform. And of course, the AM5 platform is only for desktop, so if Phoenix APUs are coming to the AM5 platform, it means that they are going to be desktop. Not only that, but in a new update for an ASUS B650 motherboard page, you can see this updated firmware actually says that it supports an upcoming CPU. Basically, AMD is almost certainly releasing their next generation APUs, and it should be just flat out a next level of performance jump when compared to their current gen. And honestly, it could be, depending on how they do it, such a big difference, especially because we're talking, you don't have to worry about all the thermal issues from notebooks and things like that. We could see AMD basically decimate the lower end GPU market. And of course, given this is already coming to an Agisa update for later BIOS updates, they are likely releasing fairly soon. And because of that, I will have an affiliate link down to these four when they are released. Now, 
With that said, it may not be until early next year, maybe around CES. That's obviously just a guess for me, or it could be releasing before the holidays. Either way, this is massive news for the PC market. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen desktop APUs, or are you more excited for, say, that 4080 Ti? Let me know down in the comments below. And I apologize, I'm kind of sweaty. Like I said, I am still fairly sick, but I am getting better. And as always, have a great day.